Hey, welcome to the Church Answers Podcast. Hey, listeners and viewers, if you did not see episode number 79 or if you did not hear it, you might want to go back and listen to it. I talked about the challenges of being an introverted pastor. That was very autobiographical because that's who I am. I'm an introvert. And though I've been a pastor, I'm not a pastor now. I know the challenges of being an introverted pastor because there's so many times that you are in a public situation or you're with a small group and you just get so drained doing that. And, and at some point you got to go rest. Well, you can go back and hear all the, all the information I gave you about that. Today on episode number 80, we're going to be talking about the challenges of an extroverted pastor. Hey, if you have challenges with workers, you don't have enough, you don't have the right people in the right place, call Belay. Connect with Belay. Belay is an incredible organization that has been around for a long time. You've probably heard me say that I have had Belay workers at the previous two organizations where I've worked inclusive of Church Answers, and we have been blessed incredibly. So if, if you want greater productivity in your organization, if you want to make sure you get the right person in the right place at the right time, and yet you don't want to do all the work, Belay will do it for you. And they will actually be a worker for Belay, but they're working for you. And so Belay is doing all the background work, all the back end work, doing all the pay, and you are getting the benefit of an incredible worker. That makes you more productive. You want to be more productive, don't you? Of course. Well, go to the book that they are making available to you, an ebook called The Power of Productivity. It's very simple for you to get it. Just text Tom. 55123. That's T H O M to 55123. And the book will be on its way. If you haven't gotten it yet, I know you've heard me mention it before. If you haven't gotten it yet, we recommend that you jump on that and look at that book. Okay. Let's talk about it. The challenges of being an extroverted pastor. Well, I've never been an extroverted pastor. I've never been an extrovert. I am my father's son. My father was a quiet, soft-spoken, did not have much to say, but great man. He's a World War II veteran. I mean, he, he was a top turret gunner on a B-24 Liberator, and he, he, he flew over Normandy, and he saw the horror of war, and he got two purple hearts. I mean, this man had so much to talk about, but he just didn't want to talk. And I, I, I'm sure I got that from my dad. My mom, on the other hand, was an obnoxious extrovert. You shouldn't say that about your mother, Tom. I don't mean that she was obnoxious to people. I just mean when people can carry a conversation about anything at any time with any person, I think I have a little bit of jealousy. And she was that way. I didn't take after her. Well, I look at my sons. I don't really think I have an introverted son. Now, maybe one leans that way, maybe, but none of them like their dad. I do have an extroverted son. Without a doubt, my oldest son, Sam, is an extrovert. If he doesn't have people around to talk to, he goes and finds people around to talk to. I mean, he, yeah, he has to go prepare sermons every now and then and get away on his own. But that guy can talk to anyone and he can carry the conversation forever. In fact, sometimes in some of our meetings, I just have to say, OK, that's enough because he's talking, 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 talking. So what are the challenges of being an extroverted pastor? Well, one of the challenges is that you don't want to stop a conversation. You have so many things to do as a pastor. It's time to move on to the next thing. And yet when you get into the uh, conversation mode with one or a few, you are being energized as an extroverted pastor. You are you don't want to leave that moment. You are you are feeling good because you are around people and you are interacting with people. Well, the challenge for an extroverted pastor is to stop and go to the next thing. Many extroverted pastors quite often find themselves late to functions, which is another challenge of them, because they got so caught up talking in the other one. Now, with me, if I am in a 60 minute meeting, I will have it done in 55 minutes and I'll be walking out the room. But there are extroverted pastors that just want to keep the conversation going. So not only do they not get to the next task, but they're often late for those assignments that have been given to them. There's another challenge. Many extroverted pastors don't realize this. You have some introverts in your congregation. And when you 
begin your extroverted personality with these introverts, it's painful to them to hear you talk, 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 and then go on, go on, go on. And like that, and many of your church members, I don't know what the split is. I don't know if it's 50-50 in America. I have no idea between introverts and extroverts. But many of your church members do not want those prolonged conversations. Another challenge of an extroverted pastor, people often don't know what is important to you and what is real important to you. Let me explain. Extroverts can get excited that it's raining for three, three minutes. They can then get excited that the sun has come up. Extroverts have this personality where they're just energized by so many things and they will be, then begin to talk about it. Now, here's what happens in church life to some of you extroverted pastors. You love to talk. And the more you talk, the more your church members listen. And they're thinking, oh, that is that means that's my pastor's passion. That's my pastor's favorite thing to do. And so they begin to think, OK, that's where the church is going. But here's the point. You get excited about so many things. You talk about so many things that oftentimes your church members do not know what is really important to you. Now, we're talking about the challenges. What do you do? Well, in my previous episode, I talked about the challenges of being an introverted pastor. One of the things that you need to do as an extroverted pastor is force yourself to listen. In other words, do some self-talk and with that self-talk, say, I need to listen to this person more than talk to them. You need to pick up on the art of listening. It is not always easy for you extroverted pastors because your tendency is to engage, to speak. But many times your church members will simply need you listening. So try to be engaged when it's in a very Ecclesiastes form, a time to speak, a time to listen. And many of you extroverted pastors do not know when it is time to listen. Start practicing that skill, which may be more of an art. Here's something I recommend to introverted pastors. You extroverted pastors, ask your spouse about your extroversion. Ask for honest feedback on, on where you may be overdoing it or over exuberant or, or talking too much. Let your spouse know that you really want that feedback because many times when we ask our spouses a question about us, we really only want to hear the good thing and they know that they might get, well, they might get a little negative feedback if they tell us something negative. Let your spouse know that you really want to know because you want to improve in this area. It is likely that your spouse knows you better than you may know yourself in much aspects of your personality. So ask your spouse to give you some guidance on this. Extroverted pastors, you always need to know that you need to get on to the next thing. So be aware of time. Time can slip away so quickly because you are engaged in conversation. And I'm not asking you to be obsessed with your watch or your smartphone, wherever you keep your time. But be aware of time because, quite frankly, many of you extroverted pastors have trouble getting to the next meeting, particularly if you book them back to back. And so be careful with that. Here's another thing that happens to extroverted pastors. It is possible at times that their extroversion causes them to neglect their families because they are so much enjoying interacting with people in the church that they are late to get to their other family time or a kid is tugging on them and they're not giving them the attention that that kid needs right then and there. So that can be a challenge as well. The good news is, all of these challenges can be overcome with self-awareness, some discipline, and maybe some feedback from someone who knows you well, particularly your spouse. Well, we've talked about introversion and an extroversion. We're going to go into other topics in future podcasts, but listen to these two together, and we think that they might be helpful. As always, we thank Belay once again. Remember, you can go to THOM, Tom, at 55123 to get your download of their newest ebook, The Power of Productivity. We'll see you real soon in the next Church Answers podcast. 
Hey, folks, this is a PS to our podcast. We got some exciting stuff that we want to offer you absolutely for free. Sam, when you think about predictive factors in, in, in a church's growth, if you take out demographics, what are some things that come to mind? Just just two. I mean, don't give me a list of 10. Just just two or three things that come to mind on predictive growth of a church. Well, evangelism and whether okay. the church is doing it or not. Bingo. And then I, and then, and then I will add... Is it an ongoing evangelism emphasis? Double bingo, well. double and maybe something about leadership and their commitment to that. So all of the above. Evangelistic churches have evangelistic pastors. Is it, the staff is the lead pastor doing the work themselves? We have a free download for you, and it's actually a sheet that you can self-score. You answer twenty questions, anywhere from uh, strongly disagree to strongly agree. And we come back and we predict what your growth rate is going to be for the next year in worship attendance. It's not a perfect tool, but it's a good tool. There's a link to that for the for the attendance predictor. Look in the show notes. You'll absolutely love it. That's cool. We'll see you soon.